you if you're seeing this right now, you're watching the party with Marty. Hey. You did it. You did it again. Week after week. No, thank you for that. You found us. You found a party with Marty show. And we are glad you're here. Welcome. Uh, we got a lot of stuff we're going to cover this week. Uh, going to try to stay off the personal stuff. Oh, boy, what a, what a week I went through since last week. And But it's all kind of good. And then it's all about kind of bad, which that's what gas do. <laughs> And for those of you who don't remember what Gat or haven't heard Gat, God's amusement toy. I mean, God's got to have fun, too. Where does he go when he needs it? When he's through with his hurricanes and earthquakes and natural disasters. Well, let's see what MJ's doing. <laughs> well, he's got me this week. And it seems like every time I straighten up and walk the straight and narrow, like I'm trying, I'm doing good, actually, on that. But, and it's painful. And I'm worn out. So y'all have to forgive me if I skip around and i mean i, I almost told our world's greatest hypothetically co-host and, and producer greg savage it so I, I was telling you right that, man i'm worn out I yeah mean, no you're you're done so man it sounds like life is a lot like one of my favorite movies of all time the the good the bad and the ugly yeah i'm all the, those the, the good <laughs> Put the sh in front of the oh, oh it should be good, <laughs> but I man, how I've been kicking it good because my ankle will just stay away from too much because I forgot what people do. I saw on two different websites one saying Marty's getting amputated. Well, it's not sure, it's just what one doctor thinks I'm not going to be able to keep it, the other one thinks I am, and the one that's actually the ankle specialist thinks I am. But the blood specialist, because we can't get the sepsis out of there, is just saying it's going to spread and start messing up other parts of your body, including the brain. And you know I don't need no help there messing that no, up. No, no. Um, but stay at least I'm saying I, I'm, I'm even trying to stay away from the pain pills when it hurts. Um, you know, I, I was down to where I just take it when it hurts real bad and I can't sleep. Um, but now that I'm training again and, and doing like, I told you, right? I got, You're trying to build uh, up that tolerance. Yeah, I, I had two. I did one one uh, bike session. Uh, stayed. I, I don't know what would happen if I had to put my foot on outside bike. <laughs> but uh, you know, one in the morning, one in the middle somewhere. I do a you know a weight workout. So getting three in a day and dieting hard. I mean, I let myself. I didn't let myself go. I had no choice. Uh, but my face started ballooning out last week when we did this. I, I didn't even recognize me. So that looks like a walrus, an albino walrus. Who is it? Oh, that's me. Holy shit. And, and then, you know, got a little heavy here. And we got coming up so, some good shows that we'll talk more about later in the show, uh, you know, with uh, big conventions. And I can't go in front of my fans looking like Casper, the fat ass ghost. And, and uh, I don't know, bro. It's. I'm, I'm, you, you can't do it all like they say Rome wasn't built in a day or a week or a month. <laughs> and here I am trying to do this in like 12 more days. 10 actually before I got the one we'll talk about later in, in Indianapolis. Yeah, you don't want to overdo it. That's for sure. Just pick your battles wisely. Yeah, I mean, I, I, my friend that comes over stays over a lot. I, oh, y'all know her. Oh, we, we missed it. Our adorator, Radical Radical Addy. Uh, she she hangs out quite a bit to help me out and thank God because I I can't drive 
uh, actually from a disability requirements, you do not drive because you know the shoulders are look like this one goes up higher, but that, that's it. And this one, well, actually, this is what it goes up. This one, that's it. I throw it up, but it won't stay up. So the steering wheel, when somebody pulls in front of me or I got to swerve, I'm in trouble. Yeah, foot, man, I got to push the brake pedal down hard. And I got that, you know, that right foot right now is still gingerly on the bike, you know, doing the pedaling. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so she, she's a blessing, man. Uh, if it wasn't for her, you know, uh, I still try to do a lot for myself. When she hangs out, I'll get up and get in the, either the wheelchair just to save, you know, but I can walk around now. I mean, I'm on the bike. I obviously can walk around. That's why I should get a wheelchair with pedals. Yeah. <laughs> you know, save my shoulders. But, um, yeah, man, uh, she, uh, in fact, she'll be, I'll probably come over tonight to watch the, uh, you know, we do Adorate. We'll Adorate together. Ad yeah. or moderate. Yeah, I'll have all your fans in the chat room. Make sure you're dropping uh, questions for Marty. He'll be in the chat. Tans I'm in there right now because we're actually taping this about an hour or two early, right? Yeah, absolutely. Always, we always yeah. get that job. Now we're going live in a couple of weeks, right? Yeah, we're gonna. You're gonna be here at the crib. You're actually gonna be right here in this studio right here. So we'll be doing a couple of live shows right here. Uh, oh, and since I'll have you in my possession for I don't know 112 in, in hours. Possession. Oh yeah, that's right. We're gonna get yeah, the interview. Easy, yeah. We're gonna get the interview of a lifetime, the real one-on-one -on -one between Savage and Marty Janetti. I, I've been and, and the fans you. can they can they do call-ins on this or not yet? No, nah, well, we can do two shows. We'll do one where it's just fan call-ins. We'll do okay. how about we go live from your Facebook and people can ask questions, uh, you know, via Facebook, and we'll, we'll answer them right on the show live. Uh, and then another episode we're gonna do where I I just want to interview you. Like Barbara Walters style. We got to put a wig on then. I uh, sure yeah. I'll put a, I'll I'll put a gray wig on. I'll pretend to be. Yeah, yeah, that you do. You now do it when she was white, whitish blonde. Uh, oh, you want me to dress like a woman? Of course you. Yeah, I, I do. That'd be funny for for our fans. Make sure uh, you keep your adorator busy because over there earlier when you started talking about Scott Hall, I guess she started reminiscing about this fan club she had that she yeah, was she, in charge of. Yeah, she moderated for uh, she was moderate for him. It's adorate for us. I think I, mean, I think she it was called the, the hunks of professional wrestling. I think they put Scott Hall in there every week. Well, yeah, Kevin, but it was Kevin Nash's. Kevin so, Nash's thing, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so I mean, she's very familiar. She's very good with working with the fans when they get a little unruly. Like this. she come out because she knows how to. You work with people. Well, she's done a great job adorating our chat room, but uh, let's get right into the first time. Okay, wait, wait, wait. We got to, we got to, oh, yes, yeah, we got to get, it. but we, we always got to tell, tell about it. Y'all don't forget, whenever you need things, this is just one of them tumblers, I think they're called. Yes, but, sir. Uh, she, she makes everything t shirts, license plates, these kind of things, necklaces. I mean, it's, it's a lot. I just don't remember it all. I should write it down. I actually wanted to get a picture. <laughs> Uh, in the room when she stays here, she's got her own room, um, you know, for overnights. But some sometimes she'll stay like she, pretty much like she lives there, which that's fine with me because I mean she does everything in the world for me. All I do is holler from my room. Oh, I need a beer. <laughs> I only have to get out of bed, but I ain't doing that lately. She'll tell you that. But uh, yeah, man, uh, she's a blessing. Like I said, uh, she she's um, I forgot what I started to tell you about her, but. She's well, you got, oh, really I know what it was. I know what it was. She's got all the stuff she makes. She spends hours putting these, she hand makes them, like puts them on the string, which don't seem like much, but one of these takes her so long to make, just one. And she's got a bunch of them for when she sets up at market, you know, around town. Um, she does good with it. She does good work. But anyway, anything y'all need, if you want specialized anything, license plates, T-shirts, hats, um, and she's got some of these things, anything, you know, I guess trinkets, we used to call them, anything you want. But it's go to K-pop, crazy, crazy with a K-R-A-Z-I-E dot com. K-pop, crazy, crazy spelled crazy dot com. Different and that, crazy. That, that website's also in the description of this video, just in case you need a little help. That's good. Yeah, I hope she got something for itchy noses. 
So what you and got this on is, uh, this picture? This right might here. not be vodka since I stopped drinking. What does this picture do to you, Martin? Actually, it ain't. When you see this picture, what does it do to you? Makes me sad and makes me. I was gonna say happy because I didn't. I thought that was. What's the one on the right? I thought it was Dustin. That, that's Dustin Rhodes. Yeah, that's his current. That's his current. Gift. That's what he's doing now. Yes, sir. Dustin, Dustin, my boy, man. We got a lot, a lot, a lot of. We can do a whole episode mm -hmm. on him alone. From from buying his time on the road, he's on so your wall, right? Happy. Yeah, right there. There it is. And you actually do it because you put you set up a studio. Thank you for that again because it looks great in here. At least I would have never done it like this. I wouldn't know how. I uh, mean, I can't wait to see yours up there in a couple weeks in New York. I think not. Not uh, now. You don't want to be from Brooklyn. You're in Queens, right? There you go. For once, yeah, you got it right. Well, no, you reminded me every time. You get I didn't think, what do they make? Oh, algae pills. Man, I was laying out today, and it was only 75 degrees, but I wanted to hit and start getting the base down for, you know, so hit it a few times before we do all our stuff in a couple weeks. And, uh, man, the pollen here, I don't know how it is up there, but the pollen is unreal. And it had about 100 bumblebees floating around me all day. I was out there for about an hour. Like I said, only 75 degrees, but it was it was very sunny. But okay. know this, uh, when you see the allergies, you just go next to gold dust over there on your wall. And uh, yeah, see, 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 uh, this is when he started out and they were trying to get him over. And who could get him over? Look up to top right little corner. Who that? That's your man. MJ sure. up in the house. Marty Gennetti. And uh, actually, gold dust or Dustin had some things to say about the but rock. We, uh, I always called him gold Dustin. Well, Mr. Gold Dustin over there basically said, fuck The Rock, uh, you know, because there's a lot going on in WWE right now. Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes have a big program coming up at WrestleMania. Yeah, I, I've been watching it because I love watching The Rock. You know, that's my boy. We had our, his first beer together when he was 14. Um, they, when they were living in the same apartment complex, him and his dad, and I guess his wife or or. I guess his wife or his girlfriend, whoever it was, you know, the rocks, the original rocks. Probably his but, wife, I would assume. Yeah. Yeah. She um I thought he had two, like one way earlier. And I don't I don't know. I didn't want to pry into his private stuff, but but uh, oh, it was so funny because you know Rocky Johnson, uh, he would be partying with us all day, and I mean everything, not just beer. And then come <laughs> five o'clock, he's peeking out the windows. Waiting to see her, her her car go by, and as soon as it went by on this side, it was like squared around, big loop. He's like, "Gotta go, guys!" And he she took off. And that was his goodbye. I like I, I've told you before. I've told everybody probably that, that he'd be. It was the bushes in front, all across the front. He'd be ducking and diving behind the bushes, looking. This we saw him one time do a forward roll because it was like a little space between the bush rack again. And he got over to the house before she got there. So he'd been home all day. And I don't know, man. The, the one time he did, he did that more than once, like two or three. The one time he did, as soon as he did all that, we get a knock at the door. And it was little, I say little, he was already six foot tall, 14-year-old, the, the Rock Jr. Um, and he was like, come on, I mean, guys, this guy? The guy that's main inventing WrestleMania 40? Yes. And and doing like 400 movies, top hit movies a year. <laughs> Came to the door and tapping, opened the door, me and the nasty boys and Sean. And he's like, come on, guys, just one beer, just one beer. He's <laughs> 14, man. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I think Knob said, okay, just one. <laughs> Just so one, I, gave, man. I gave it to him and he slammed it down and then he did some forward roller shit got back in the house. He <laughs> got the hell out of there. Let me ask you, yeah. Marty, who do you got between Cody and Roman? Yeah, that's tough because they're gonna you know, they gotta keep Roman going with his uh, you know how long has he had in that five hundred days? Uh no, more like thirteen hundred. 1300 days, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it ain't that many. He's 526 yeah, yeah, yeah. or something. No, 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 it's, it's like two years. It's 1300. I must, no, I must have had a long ass damn hangover. <laughs> you had a vacation, man. And welcome back <laughs> home. Welcome to planet Earth, where Roman Reigns has been your undisputed champion for over 1200 something days for sure. And then again, though, Cody's 
if he loses, it kind of knocks him way down because you know, well, the big the, build the way they're doing it this year is they're having a tag team match night one. Right. And yeah. then yeah. If, if Cody and Seth can win, then Cody gets Roman Reigns fair and square on night two. If, if okay. Cody loses, then yeah. it's all out bloodline's going to come out and kick his ass. Oh, okay. I thought The Rock would be involved the second day if they were, if The Rock's... Well, I'm sure The Rock is going to come out day two. I'm sure he's going to come out. With stipulations and special rules. I watched it this... Was it just past Monday? And, I, you know, I was do, I ride my bike in front of the TV when you know, certain shows like, all right, let me do a bike now. I'm, you know, watch, you know, so I can keep up. And he came out and I said, well, this was supposed to be like a 15, 20 warm up and did do some weights and then do some more afterwards. And I said, well, I, I, you know, usually whoever comes out first, they, they got 15 minutes um, around there, give or take a minute or two. And, and that's a long at five, two minutes of promos are hard to do, you know, for yeah. some, not, not the Nationals like Michael Hayes and Ric Flair, Dusty, Dusty Rhodes, who that was what made me sad in that picture. Him and I were, you know, good friends. Um, I was his only friend at first when he came in, before, when he was, what was it? The yellow polka dot guy, just a yeah. common man, the plumber. But yeah, uh, yeah I, I often tell that be, me and him because nobody liked him because he was Booker down. He was Booker down in WCW, and he had to do certain things to work, like fire him or find him or whatever. And storylines that they, the ones that wasn't winning or going over, they. Um, I'm sure he. Just a quick one, quick story. Watch right here. I'm sure he experienced with Terry Taylor, the Red Rooster. Yep. Him and I were, were good friends. He was booking for WCW at the uh, time I came in there in '98, and he came in. He told me what he was doing, what my match was doing. I said, "Man, you!" I give him a high five. He goes, "What's that for?" I said, "You God, you got it made, bro. Make you got to be making good money." He goes, "It's all right." I said, and you're in charge. You get to tell everybody what to do. And you're, I mean, you're in charge. He goes, you think it's that way, huh? I said, ain't it? He goes, sit right here and just watch the next two book, you know, uh, war room sessions. And I'm like, okay, is that going to piss them off? <laughs> you know, do it. Because when you're getting told what you're going to do, one of them is going to be very disappointed. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think I forgot who. He says, well, just don't say nothing, just watch. And I'm sitting there and I ain't saying nothing. I didn't want to be there. You know, kind of felt like it was rude to sit in on somebody else's, unless I'm grooming for his job. And I forgot who came in first. And, uh, and, he, and he goes, like, you you, you know, the, the guys that had been around a while noticed that you're doing the favor. So so you're telling them you're doing the favor, which means you may, you may not, you're not going to win. <laughs> and, uh, you're doing the favor, and uh, the head was one day, I'm not gonna say who it was, but that's why I did. I wasn't gonna, but his head immediately, the one that was they used to call it doing a job, but I, I like you know doing the favor better, and so do so did the boys doing the favor, but um, and I did a lot of favors, not sexually for, for that, <laughs> <laughs> but um, just, just making sure, yeah. But the boy, the, the, his head. Except that down. one time. Except that one time with Vince, right? That one time. No, that was you dropped that and told me. That. <laughs> yeah, that was me. That was me. I, uh, yeah, because so. you were mad at me, you know, because you wanted to be there, and, and I couldn't do nothing about that. I know, but it's okay. If I see Vince, I know what to do. Yeah, well, you, you have to see him in jail, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, that's a civil suit he's going through. Man. But it's crazy because Rock is kind of turning into the new Vince McMahon, if you think about it. He kind of owns the company. Oh, he now. is, yeah. So, so yeah. I wonder if he's going to have – now, he would know how to handle it well. So when Rick uh, – I'm sorry, Terry Taylor told, told him, you know, you're doing the favor. I mean, it wasn't even one second the head went down like this. And he goes, and then we'll we'll get you next week. And that's the, that's the truth. It, just because you did the favor this week, it ain't over. I mean, unless they've been building to the peak, and then the big blow off is you know, then it's hard to rebuild. But you can. It's that's all up to the Booker and, and the story. Uh, what do you call them? The writers. But yeah. you can win a big one next week and be right there. So it's, it, it used to be, you know, you, when you do the favor. I, I hate saying the job, but that's. What most people yeah, know. that's what it is, then. Yeah, it, it is a job, I guess. Speaking of a but, job, uh, what do you think? But wait, wait, wait. Let, let me finish this. And then we'll get right back to that because I'm, you know, I love, I love telling stories while I remember them. Um, 
That's a good point. The next guy that came in, same thing. Uh, it was, but it, it was. I hate saying the name. Well, no, no, uh, because it works out. You, lo you love saying the name. Just say it. It, it was Ray Mysterio, but I'm not going to Junior. But I ain't going to say his name. Um, sure. Yeah, and uh, you know he, he had to. I, I don't even remember who, and I won't say. But Ray's head went down. That's the experienced brother, you know, with, with you know very high knowledge of the business. Head went down. And I, he didn't complain or nothing. The first guy kind of threw some jabs in. Yeah, then how's this working? How's that working? Damn, Terry had answers. But when little Ray, or Ray Ray, some of us call him, and um, you know he's tiny, man. He's he's like one of them uh, action figure size. <laughs> and you put him in a box, and at least he can dance and move for you. Do a, what's it called? Six one nine. Six one nine. But they he uh, he didn't say a word. He was just all good, right? Uh, and I went, well, at least he didn't jab back at you. Door flies open, and here comes Kevin Nash. What the fuck are you doing, Terry? <laughs> what? What do you do? You've got Ray doing a job. We're trying to build him up to be something without. What the fuck? Fine. Go go over. You take <laughs> care of it. And then I'm like, wow, is that, that don't happen a lot. He goes, a lot. There's three click, four clicks here. There's Dusty Rhodes click. I think Ric Flair's click, Kevin Nash's click, Kevin Sullivan's click, Dusty Rhodes. There was five clicks there. And if you wasn't in one of them like me, free independent, you know, because I don't like that crap. Never have. You, you ain't got no chance. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, so, you know, booking, yeah, that, that was a hell of an experience with, with uh, Terry Taylor. I don't know how he put up with it. But he did. Okay, so right. back to he got, he got used to it, probably. But, yeah, uh, speaking very, of doing – Intelligent and wise book uh, wrestler. Uh, it's not an easy wise. job. It's not an easy job to have the pen. I thought I would like having it, and I did it one time in Houston for an independent group. Oh my God! The 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 Kevin Nash thing. The first the first show we had. I mean, it jumped up in attendance and TV ratings. You know, for local TV in Houston went up, and I, this one guy that was just it was it was hard to do anything with him. You know, because you can only do things that fit what they can do. Otherwise, it ain't going to make sense and it's not going to look good to the fans. And ultimately, that's who we're trying to please. Uh, so, you know, I had him doing the favor. And I'll be damned if like 15 minutes later, they come and say, it's a lady wants to see you. And I'm like, you know, they always do. I can't right now. Busy. He goes, no, no, it's about something with her husband. Is it, well, I know her husband. It's, it's what's his name? I, I'm going to say because I don't remember. <laughs> um, but so I went to the curtain, called her side. It was his wife, <clears throat> and um, what's up? And she said, "You know, we've been doing this for so long. We were ready to quit because they don't know how to use people around here. But then we heard you were coming in, and you was taking over. It was called Power Zone Wrestling." Um, you were taking over Power Zone Wrestling. We've seen a couple of shows that were better than they've been before you got here. So we got all happy. I said, yeah, stay in it. Don't quit yet. Marty will, Marty will take care of this. And you did the same thing. So we're quitting. And we're quitting now, not later. <laughs> what do you say to that? Like, No, I, I, I don't want to lie to her and say, we'll build them up next week. Because he we, we we just wasn't good. We didn't have much in the town. Um, you know, so we we'll were use him as good as we could as a favor doer. Um, but that wasn't good enough. And they left. And it was just like, damn. I thought of Terry Taylor right away. Like, wow. <laughs> you <laughs> he got was a right. Good, it yeah, happens all the time. What, yo, I mean, what could you tell her? Tell her the truth. To tell her he sucks. Yeah. And, get your, and, they, get, and they had kids too, you know. And they, you're like, said, you're lucky you're even on the card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you Shut know, your I'm, ass up and get the hell out of here. Or I'm not going to give her, you that hot dog. I told her, I said, look, I'll, I see he's only been getting $50. I can, I'll double it, 100 I mean, because, you know, Indies, you don't, when you're opening or mid card. You don't get paid that much, you know. You Back mean, then, that was in two thousand. Hot dog and a handshake. Yeah, old school man. I need that. I think Claritin. They said works for allergies. 
So who do you got in this match? Seth yeah, okay. Rollins and uh, Drew McIntyre. Who's doing the job, Marty? Shoot, I, I, I'll the, the, the favor. I would go. I'd go with Drew. <laughs> the only reason was that sticking up is gray hair. Uh, I'd go with Drew. Uh, Drew doing the favor. But only because I hope Drew don't get upset when and I see him one day and he's like, "Fuck you," you know, <laughs> you know the whole like I'm like I booked it, but but uh. Because I mean, when 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 Seth comes out, you and you know I worked with him um, when he was what was it, black black something? Yeah, Tyler Tyler Black. Tyler Black, yeah. Um, and man, he was good. And that was before he had WWE. I know he's improved now. Working with better talent makes you good. I'm not saying the guys there wasn't good talent, but the best are there. Um, Except for uh oh no, <laughs> I'm sorry. How many minutes have we killed? Hold on, what, what's the minute, Mark? I'll, I'll slow down talking. Well, right now I got Seth Rollins losing the title to Drew McIntyre. You do you so you they're gonna make McIntyre you think they'll make McIntyre champ. And yeah, nothing yeah. against McIntyre. I mean, I I've never met him. Um I, th- he I think he'll be champion for five minutes. Like I was. <laughs> because Damian Priest is going to cash in that briefcase on us. Uh, oh, that. okay, that makes sense. That's what I think is going to happen. That could be. Yeah, that, that's that's a good one. I don't know. Somebody whispered in your ear, but that's a good nah, one. And Seth Rollins over here, his wife is taking on my personal friend Rhea Seth Ripley. Rollins. So I'm sorry, Seth. That's but you're his both, wife in real life. That's his real life wife. They have babies together. Yes, Becky Lynch. I didn't know that shit. I'm so far yeah, behind. They have kids. They have a whole family. She just wrote a nice book, actually. She, her, and you know what's crazy about her book? She wrote the book, and then she didn't like it, and she wrote she rewrote the whole thing like two weeks before a pay-per-view. Damn. And wow, released it. It's a number one seller, all that good stuff. Really? Mine will be that if I ever get it out. I, yeah, and I, I, was talking, I, I was talking to this guy today that said, look, I'll finish it for you. You know who that guy was? Yeah, I'll do it. Might uh, as well. I, I talk to you enough, man. I, every every night I could probably have one chapter. Yeah, if not more. You know, um, and, and uh, you, you said I will have it done, and you know, after we get through with WrestleCon and all that, we'll have it done. Uh, hold on, I'll get the Thunderbolt. But there's not a lot, but I'll get to it. But um, just my my our CEA, you know, Chief Executive Advisor. Clearwater right. Mike, Mean Mike. Oh, oh yeah, the, Mean the, Mike. Yeah, from the uh, uh, John, uh, Texas Hangman and Disorderly Conduct, two good tag teams. And uh, he he was he's been saying, like, man, I wanted to, all the stories that you told me in your three quarters through with the book. You should have been done with the last in, in like a month or two. You've been going on for five years about finishing this book. And it's true because I just got so far through it, I got bored with it. You know, but I've got ADHD r- real bad. Now we're gonna and, go through chapters. Chapter one is gonna be the birth and the life. You know, you do the birth, the life, the introduction, where you're from, autobiography. We're gonna go through your schooling, grade school, junior high, high school. Well, but see, I've done all driving. that. You've done it, but we got to put it and print it but, and get it out. No, there. I've done. I've, I've yeah. done. I've done that. I started printing it all. And then uh, well, during one move, wherever the hell it was from, was you lost, you lost it? a lot of places. The whole notebook, it was a whole thick notebook. It wasn't that thick, but it was, it was pretty thick. Um, about three quarters of the way through that. And I had to tell you, my writing is horrible. And now it's worse. It's like, see, that arthritis. Well, that's why we're going to type that or whatever. digital. Well, I, I thought a better way is to... Um, I just sort of voice it and, and let somebody just go from there. Let the publisher or you know the writer for the company. And I've got two people already that are just waiting and they've been waiting. They they said like uh Clearwater Mike said, um, hey man, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to pre-buy, you know, pre-sell and buy one of your books. But uh, they told me you gotta wait till the year of 2050 before it's ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> but Pre-order so, uh, Bobby Gennetti's book, shipping now, 2042. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I do need to finish it up or not going to do it all. And I feel like now with the podcast, but at least for our podcast people, which we're getting there, we still need more. And y'all subscribe if you didn't subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. If you want to do the VIP, you get a lot of extra stuff. I'm not sure what all 
we're going to do. I've seen some of the other guys offer that you get to see the show a day before everybody else. You know, uh, you get, I don't know, a lot of t shirt. Of, uh, uh, you, what have we got? What are we offering right now? Right now, we're offering cookies and a milkshake. But about a handshake. That's about it. Now, we got some videos. Basically, what we wanted to do is get you to do yeah, videos. videos that yeah, nobody else. Yeah, you got to, you, you need to I do got, a little I extra gotta, work I, to see them. I, I, I got to get on your ass about just getting you maybe just in the studio a couple of days a week to record some exclusive stuff like your opinions about certain wrestlers, legends, uh, you know, private stories. Dirty stories, maybe, maybe some sexy stories. Dirty story, story. yeah. You gotta, yeah, you, know, you gotta be. We gotta put, dirty yeah, we gotta put some filth on there. You know, what the hell? Are well, I mean, there's for? plenty, and I don't want like kids hearing it. Well, um, there's plenty yeah. of filth in episode five. Go back and watch. I think I remember. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I need to do get out of this habit. I'm looking down at the, the to see us, but the camera's up here. So my yeah. eyes are shooting here, and I should look, look at right the camera. here. Look at the camera. First of all, look at this. Feels weird. Yeah, let's let's do, let's move on. All right. All right so what, this is the Hall of Fame. Yeah. yeah, This is this year's Hall of Fame class, starting with Thunderbolt Patterson. Thunderbolt. Now I have to look down to look at him. Thunderbolt. That's not Thunderbolt. That's Ernie Ladd, ain't it? No, that's Thunderbolt. Yeah, Ernie was a little bigger muscle. Um, Thunderbolt. He wasn't that big of a guy, but he had charisma out the ass. Uh, as a as a kid that was watching wrestling, you know, Thunderbolt had all the you know the cool moves and stuff and in style and flavor and swag. You know, he was swag before swag was swag. But he, um, I met him one time and he was nice as hell, respectful, and it was just a you know, hey, how you doing, you know? And that's when I was a little older uh, and thinking of getting into wrestling at that time. So it's always been twenty two or twenty two. You know, thinking of getting in it, and I met him and a few others that were like, "Yeah, man, uh, yeah, I want to do this." And uh, yeah, so T Boat was good. And next up, we have Bull Nakano. I uh, she's mainly she wrestled mostly in Japan, right? Uh, she wrestled all over the place, but I believe a lot in Japan. I think that's where she was most famous. Yes. I, I think she was with us uh, when I told you. I, I don't know if I've ever met her. And I still ain't sure it's her, but I have a girl in pictures. I I got gathered on the pictures sending to you, personal pictures. But um, if she's if I you ain't got no pictures, we she's got a tattoo of a like a, a bone side of others. If that's actually her, on her hand though, back of her hand. So when she puts it up there, it looks like a skeleton bone on her face. I'll, I'll get the pictures and we'll show another time when if, if we find a reason. But uh, if that's her, she's nice as hell. She's very nice. Uh, we were in Germany uh, together. And so it was just one night at the, at the bar. And no, <laughs> not what you're thinking. No, it was just one night. But the girl that was with her, yes. <laughs> okay. she, I think she, she was a little Oriental girl. And we got there's, the U.S. Express. There's, there's fun in this one because, and I'm happy for them that I'm surprised it's taken this long to get them in. But I guess they're going in as a, as a team. Yes. Okay. Uh, which is why the Rockers, you know, that's the only way I'm getting in. Um, not that I didn't do good in singles. I actually did some great things. I mean, you're looking at the body of work, not just, you know, one week or one day or one month or one year. And, uh, you know, from the beginning, it only took me six months before I was wrestling Ric Flair for the world title of NWA World Championship. And uh, there was quite a few times because if it wasn't good, Rick wouldn't have had nothing to do with it again. But so I had like, I don't know, four or five matches with him, or like within a six week period. And uh, <clears throat> that was so we moved with the story with them is like, so when I moved to, from where I was NWA, Kansas City territory, Harley Race, when I moved on up to Minneapolis for Vern Gagne, um, they wanted to, they, you know, I was doing good on my own, and I got over quick, like in two months, maybe a month and a half. I mean, I already could walk out and get a pop, pretty good pop. That's that's another thing I meant to mention with Seth and uh, uh, what's his name? He's, he's Drew, taking Drew on. Drew, yeah. When Drew comes out, he gets a pop, or, or, you know, um, 
when yeah. what's his name comes out, they start singing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's got it so good that when you know you're a good worker, when you go in the ring and you don't have to say nothing for five minutes, you just go to go to say something and they start cheering for you, saying things, you sit back and take it in. Yeah, you know, Seth, Seth can walk in any him. arena in the world and they'll start singing for him. Yeah, and and just responding to everything he says, and I got to get some allergy pills. And for y'all out there to think, nah, he's he, cocaine, <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> as, far okay. as, far as far as I know, that don't make your nose itch. You didn't mind back in the day when I did that. If I did that now, I think my heart would say, nah, I had enough. <laughs> we ain't going back to that. But uh, but the allergies, I guess, as you get older, affects you worse. Um, you know who has the worst allergies in the country? Addy, uh, Rhode, Rhode Island. Okay, so we had uh, gone to AWA and, and it was fairly over already. And Vern and Greg Gagne came to me, and Greg was, you know, obviously Vern's son and booking everything. Vern just saw, saw it all, said yes or no. <clears throat> but uh, they, they asked me, took me in the office, and Vern said, Jesus Christ, you're getting over so fast. We want you for a tag team. And I'm like, okay, that's what I'm good at. That's how you know most of my career was in Kansas City for a year, year and a half, maybe. Um, then we'll lead in to we got a segment where we talk about Scott Hall. Um, but that was after about a year there. <clears throat> but um the Vern's like, Jesus Christ, we need somebody good that can keep up with you, you know, because I was doing a lot, especially when I was 25, you know, high flying and doing stuff that other people hadn't seen, which is you know, when you're a smaller guy, I think it was 225 at a time. That's how you you get over. You can't punch and kick with a guy that's 6'6", 290 and muscled up when you're 225. So anyway, he wanted somebody similar that could do the same. And he asked me, was there anybody that I thought I wanted to wrestle with and could keep, you know, possibly keep up? And I said, well, yeah, there was this guy. Um, I met and tagged one time, and we had a great match. I mean, for the first time. You know, it's generally it takes a few times so you get your timing together, your chemistry together, and understand what each other you're thinking. It took us no time. Within two minutes in that match, first match, and the only match I had with him to that point. Of course, we hung out and all that, but they um, they wanted to put so they said, well, yeah, we've heard of him. And Greg says, yeah, I think he actually sent us a video. Um, so, and he looked pretty good. So, Jesus Christ, let's do it. You know, Vern had a sort of a list. Jesus Christ let's do it. Jesus Christ on everything. Um where where I go with Gat, he was like, Jesus Christ. But so you know they, they brought uh Sean in and uh we had a couple talks before tagging together with uh, Larry Zabisco. I thought the thing was called Zabisco's Corner where he blasts the new guys coming in and you know puts himself over. <clears throat> and even the, the talk sessions went fairly well. Uh, so we started tagging, and they liked it at first. We, you know, Marjorie and Shawn Michaels, like I think two matches. Then Vern's like, "We're going, we're going to name you guys. Let's go with the American Express." And, and I'm like, "I think as a credit card, Vern, I don't, I don't think you can do that. I mean, if I don't know." He goes, "Oh, that's right, Dude, that's Christ, you smart aleck young guys." Okay, or you dumbass old guys, one or the other. But um, he goes, I thought over, he goes, well, I can't go American. We want you to be U.S. Express. And I'm like, Vern, there's a team in WWF. <laughs> they already named that, Mike Rotundo and Barry Wyndham. Jesus Christ, they're stealing everything from me. You know, because they were getting Hogan and, and Ventura and Bean Gene and all of his talent, you know was leaving and going there. <laughs> now they just stole his idea that he just thought of because he wanted to go with American Express. So, um, you know, that's the first uh, time, the first time I saw them in person. Never got to hang out with Barry that much. But he's the nicest guy in the world, fun to be around, very respectful, um, keeps keeps everything light. But I had told him that he died laughing, <laughs> you know, because in case they got the word, hey, they're trying to steal your gimmick like Rock and Roll Express did when we became Midnight Rockers. We ended up with Midnight Rockers um, out of all that. But uh, but Mike Rotondo, uh, I, I worked with him quite a bit as he, when he was IRS, you know, the Internal Revenue. What was it called? Uh, Irwin's 
uh, Durin something. Shyster, yeah. Um, but IRS. Tax man. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, did business suits and all that. Looked like the picture you showed a while ago. And, uh, man, he's a good worker. Uh, we had Common Bond he, in his uh, tournaments. Uh, I think he finished fifth in the nation. Um, but that was at Division uh, One. You know, I was down two or, or Division Two or something. But I hit third, I think. Um, there was still controversy about that. I should have won. But anyway, we had you know, a lot in common on that because, you know, amateur wrestlers, collegiate wrestlers wasn't as prevalent then as it is now. Um, <clears throat> but we got, and he's a good guy, you know, fun hearted, you know, but you got to do most of them making him laugh. <laughs> uh, and we had some, some decent, really decent matches. And, uh, that, and that's, you know, shortly after we shot and I had split up. So, I mean, he kind of helped me remember how to do singles again because I, I tagged so long. And, um, but uh, yeah, so that's my, that's mine with them. I feel so bad for him. I didn't get to talk to him at all uh, when his son, you know, passed away recently. Was it recently? Yeah, it was uh, last year. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all know whose son is, right? Yeah. Bray Wyatt, man. Yeah. And I get, I did never get to meet Wyndham, Bray. Wyndham Rotunda is his real name. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because it's him, Barry Wyndham. Yeah, they're saying he might go in the Hall of Fame this year too, because they still have a couple of weeks left. So we'll see. Oh, this year? Okay, that'd be good. Yeah, they're be talking cool. about it. You know how else is going to the Hall of Fame this year? Big boy going in, Mr. Muhammad Ali, the GOAT. Man, that was my hero. And you know, I, I boxed when I was young, like 16, I think, to 18. And then I just sparred around the, the boxing gym to stay in shape. You know, I, I did the martial arts and you ever get well, to see him box? You ever no, I never got. The, I never got. You know what upset me? I mean, I would watch his fights when I was boxing. I'd watch him so damn much. You know, pick up little things he could do. But you ain't gonna do what he. You know, I mean, he no. wasn't even that big. He was like what six four, uh, two thirty or something. He wasn't yeah. a you know monster like uh, George Foreman, um, but he was soft. But to be that big and that quick, I mean. Floyd Mayweather Jr. here is like as quick as you can be. I mean, your punch can be almost at his eye and he can just turn in the last second. Yeah, that guy him. will punch you 10 times before you even put your hands up. Yeah. And and uh, I don't know, man. What about I, th I think we might have touched on this. Bro, the greatest me, fight of all time, though, for me was Ali and Frazier, bro. Like number, three times. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jesus Christ. Man. The one, the one. I mean, they they were, and those were the fights I studied. But you know, Joe had that bob and weave style. You know, and they said he could hit you from six inches away with a punch, and it was like a, a, a some one caliber, whatever caliber you said. Uh, the impact of a twenty-two caliber, or whatever it was. Nah, that I guy mean, was from throwing six like. Inches. I would have, I would have loved. I would, pay, I'll pay big money to see Frazier versus Tyson, Prime versus Prime. Like that would be like Frazier. Yeah, yeah. I think Frazier could go with Tyson for a few. Yeah, we always wonder Ali, you know, because well, Ali yeah. was bigger. I mean, who thought that he was going to beat six foot four? If not, yeah, he's right, six four, two hundred and sixty pounds, muscled up, George Foreman. I mean, who the hell thought he – and he knocked out Frazier, and he knocked out other people. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's that's because he just he just annoyed everybody, though. Hold on, let me just say. Stupid phone. Who, who's disrupting the party with Marty? This is uh, the director from Dark Side of the Ring. Hi, Tara. Where are you? I'm doing the podcast right now. Uh um, and we're we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about some of it in a little bit one of the other episodes, but um, I'm still happy that you were my uh, producer for that. I mean, I thought my my well, I got to watch it again because my memory slipped so bad. But but thank you for all that. Um, let me finish this up and I'll give you a call. And we, we, okay, thank you, sweet. Okay. All right, bye. All right, bye. There was, there, yeah, I was already going to talk about Dark Side of the Ring when we get to the the thing that I won't mention yet. That, that, yeah, don't mention oh. it yet. There's a picture yeah, of Ali. Boy, you get me upset. Yeah, man, he he was, and you know what's the coolest thing too for you know for guys like us, um, 
you know, his his jaw jacking and yapping and, and rhyming and reading. Well, you know, he he learned all that from watching Gorgeous George. And he, and he, he says that, you know, he tells yeah. that. So does yeah. uh, uh, Dundee, his manager. You know, they he would go to the matches to learn some of the techniques of gabbing because he knew it was flashy, you know, and he also knew that nobody does that. <laughs> They'll pay more to see me get beat than to see me win. <laughs> yeah. I always you know thought I mean? he was a pioneer for sports entertainment because he kind yeah. of blended into wrestling uh, as well, along with boxing. Yeah, and that made me – I think WrestleMania won. It was, yeah. He was there, and I was so upset. I was like – Man, that's been my hero. I studied him. Well, they did a bunch of did, did, didn't he have a match with Gorilla Monsoon too? Like I heard, I, he had a few. Where he boxed and, and he wrestled a boxer versus. Yeah, wrestling. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I, yeah. I think they did. I know when Noki did it with you know, Noki from Japan, the yeah. champion. That they, they did it for sure. Yeah. I, I no, I'm sure. I'm sure Gorilla had a match with too. He had a few matches, which were all good, by the, the way. The one with Noki was. You know, I, Horrible because the Noki just laid the whole time and kept trying to kick him in the knees when he got close enough and he had to just box, you know, he was boxing. So it went nowhere for, I don't remember how many rounds, but you know, it was interesting to see how they would do it. And back then I think I was, I don't know if I was smart to the game, you know, wrestling game yet. So I was like, Hmm, well, they stay on their feet. <laughs> I'll either get him. But if he takes him down, it's gonna be tough, you know. Boxers box, you know. That's what, that's another yeah. reason I went I went into martial arts to learn I'm more. Su than I'm, just I'm, I'm surprised they didn't put him in the Hall of Fame sooner, to be honest with you. But you know who else is going in the Hall of Fame? And let's get through the Hall of Fame so you can talk about. But I was always cool. mad because Ali was on there more than once. My hero, and I never got to see him. Shit, that, that's a shame, man. I wish I would have met him too. But your boy's in there. He's getting in there this year. ECW themed WrestleMania. Paul Heyman now in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> There he is. There's today. a lot I can say about him, but and even after, it's none of it really positive. It was at first, man. We we'd hang out, uh, you know, the, the uh, China Club in New York was popular Monday nights, so the celebrities went there because it was an off night for most people. But you still have they still we all still went to the VIP room. Um, but even Monday nights fans, you know, New York City people knew. Um, the celebrities coming. I mean, everybody, not just the wrestlers. We wrestled at Madison Square Garden on Monday night. So that's, that was a definitely, you know, we were going to be there, the ones that go out. And, but, it, you know, we met so many people in there. Uh, TLC, Seinfeld one night was standing behind me. You know, what's his name? Seinfeld. He was standing behind me, and Kurt Hennig was sitting here. We was at the bar getting a drink. And I hear that voice. You know, he's got that voice, that, you, you know, and you know, it's all celebrities in there mostly. <clears throat> And they're and they're whoever they brought with them, and I hear him say, "Oh my God, oh my God, you know who that is?" And I'm looking around, see, so because he ain't gonna know me from you know, he's right behind me, right? That's Mister Perfect. That's Mister Perfect. I'm like, damn, I know that voice. So I got to ease over like this, sort of like when I take the picture of the gangsters, but said so we didn't have cell phones that, but I had to lean back like I was gonna put the phone up and take a picture. Um, I was gonna lean back and like act like I was. Tapping curtains, but I cut my eyes and it was Seinfeld. I'm like, holy shit. Uh, I think that was the first time I'd been in China Club, <clears throat> but met so many people in there that were just, you know, cool to me. Um, TLC, you know, the group, singer group, loved them to death. Um, got, we kind of got hanging out with, with two of them, and uh, Sean somehow, I don't know, how are you going? We won't go into that. It didn't Shined work out, out the way. It, so it didn't work out for Sean. Did it work out for you? It could have if John wouldn't have. And how, about Paul, which, how about Paul Heyman? Was he there? So yo, So then um, he comes up to me one night there, uh, and we, you know, we wanted, to, or at least I did, and evidently he did too. Venture up there was the VIP rooms, like a, a big square room over here. Then outside is the whole big ass open to where all you know everybody else is at. There was a lot more people girls out there than there was in the smaller room, but it was still a decent sized room for a VIP. So, but you'd go out into the crowd. And we would, I mean, we didn't get recognized as much as like Mariah Carey would, or in which I met there, or Madonna used to come there. She got, we'll save all that for a, a, a different day, but 
stories with, with Mariah and and uh, Madonna, a few others, um, but it was cool. And one of my boys, we have to get on here, who was managing, you know, and he was a big time fan, and still is. Um, he's now uh, uh, does the announcing for Chicago Cubs. He's like a, a co, whatever it is, uh, color commentator, whatever. Um, he, he witnessed a lot of shit, <laughs> a lot of shit. Um, and he, we talk, you know, still, and he'll tell me. I had mentioned about the uh, one time I was talking about, you know, I met TLC there and left I in Chile, which, you know, Lisa and, and Bruce Onda, um, you know, we sat, me and Sean sat with them one night and, and you know, I was, I, I was surprised to meet them because I loved them, their music and, and their looks, <laughs> you know, I mean, we're probably four or five years younger than, than me that at that time. Sean was right about their age though, because he's younger than me too. <clears throat> but um hell I was I was just you know having a good time wasn't trying to pair up but it was me paired off you know, sitting over by Chile and him sitting in front of Lisa like it almost was paired up that way till Sean, Sean man he has a way <laughs> getting people upset. But I oh T Boz I'm looking and like I thought she was okay, but she was busy. Uh, but I look back now, I was like, man, I picked the wrong man one. <laughs> he was who I should have been with or messing less, with. Less and less. But, yeah, but he said, he goes, oh, yeah, the, the, they come in there a few times. I just that time they would sit with y'all. But, uh, yeah, but we ought to get him on the show because he can tell some stories about all the boys, not just me. And me and him had a lot of good times in there. But he was manager of the China Club for the VIP section in particular. And so he saw, imagine all the shit he saw. <laughs> Stuff he like saw, he saw a lot of shit, shit that you probably yeah. shouldn't discuss on this show. Well, one I can't, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you know, you doubt. can't discuss for the those. VIP section. Our VIP paid VIP part. We can tell them stories. <laughs> oh well, that's a different story. But how about this? Yeah. You saw this recently. You saw oh, it. God. You Boy, saw you it, Marty. You saw the Iron Claw. I need to know. The people need to know. What did you think of the Iron Claw, Mister Gennetti? Well. Uh, you know, our, our CEA, Clearwater Mike, Mean Mike, he said, he sent me the link to see the preview. That was a while back, maybe a month or six weeks ago. And I watched the preview trailer, whatever you call it. And man, I was like, man, they got such a story to tell. And it, it just don't, the trailer didn't impress. You know, I, I thought the trailer should have been a lot better than that. And even the production value was, it was like, a, I mean, of course, it's supposed to be dressed like 70s and 80s, but the filming didn't have to be like 70s and 80s. You know, production value didn't have to be like that. And it was it's just like, just the trailer, I thought, oh, man. And Mike said, Mike, I told Mike, I said, uh, I, don't, I don't know, man. Uh, and he goes, oh, I think it's okay. I don't think it's bad. He said, I, I wasn't too impressed, but it's good. I thought it was okay. So, um. I just never got around to watching it till last night. I don't know when it came out, but <clears throat> last night our adorator came over. So I want you to watch. I want to watch this with you. I was like, okay, what the hell could this be? We got a porno going. What are we doing? And she's uh said Iron Claw. I said, oh good, I haven't seen it. Good. I told uh, uh, Tap a Clearwater Mike, Mean Mike, um, that we would you know I would watch it. I would definitely watch it. We got it watching it, and you know, you, you figure it's going to move slow in the beginning. And uh, I almost got bored to death at first. I was like, wow, because, you know, they started as kid, you know, babies, and nobody into wrestling except Fritz, you know, yeah, the dad. Yeah. And, uh, and you, have you seen it? I thought it was terrible, too. I, I, I'll tell you my opinion <laughs> in a moment. And a lot of the boys I've talked to agreed with me. The timeline was absolutely bullshit. The it timeline was, was shit. Hell off. They, they yeah, spent more time showing Zac Efron in his underwear instead of showing <laughs> scenes from Japan and, and getting a Ric Flair that's worth a shit. Oh, my God. That Ric Flair was... was I mean, if I'm an actor and I have done a few movies, uh, none of them that hit the big screen, not yet. That's still a chance. Um, it's a good thing about acting. You can do that until you're 90. And then some of them do pass that. They're good. But anyway, if I'm an actor, I'm... Doing some person, you know, real life character, but you know, I'm gonna act like it. I'm gonna study the hell out of everything I can, and if I'm getting cooperation, you know, from wherever can help me, but that would be 
that's why you know kevin yeah i'll get back to that um but you, rick flair has a unique technique a sound a rhythm uh pretty much robotic because it's, it's almost the same thing every time you know jet flying you know limo driving yada 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 same way same technique same rhythm i mean the guys in the dressing room you know, for Indianapolis Colts, did that his whole, and I'm having a hard time holding these alligators down. They did it great. And here's the actor, and it was horrible. It was I horrible. mean, horrible. Even our adorator was like, oh, my God, that's horrible. And Kerry, there's my boy, man. Him and I were actually close. Uh, we got closer as time went on. That's one time, I don't know, we, we came back. I don't know if that was when we were getting ready to go out or we'd gone out and came out, you know, came back, which would carry, man, girls loved him. If, he had you're, that, if, you're, if you're laying down, it must have been a long night. Could have been, because I'm in the damn Zubas, you know, and the Road Warriors came up with their line of clothes, the Zubas. Yeah. Although we did wear them out the clubs, that, you know, when they knew who you were. You might look like a goofball, but yeah, come on in. <laughs> Sean would double it by wearing a tank top. <laughs> you know, wear two balls in a tank top to a club with cowboy boots, snakeskin cowboy boots. But um, yeah, is that oh, that's the movie the the ones that yeah. you see. Okay, David from the movie is the only one that looked right. I mean, yeah. The, here's the thing: Kevin was to oversee all this, like the director of facts or how, where that, that that's called, you know, in the movie world. Yeah. If he was in charge of this, uh, I, I mean, they're all, everybody's gone, but him, he can tell it was what any way he wants. So you see right here, Carrie is taller than any of them. I, yeah. And, and uh, in the movie, and he's, he's definitely built better than all of them in the yeah. movie, Kevin's taller, Kevin's built better. Uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin was the better worker, but though David, that one right there, um, he he was the best worker, and you know he he died in Japan, which yeah. there was the first thing that they. I mean, he did have a busted intended uh, intestine that was known, but he also, and I shouldn't say this because I love the body, I love Kerry, and I love his boys. I had to wrestle them in Israel, but they, don't put those up yet. Um, they. Uh, I mean, they're great. They're respectful of them. Uh, but the, most of the boys would tell you that were around back then. Uh, they were around, obviously, before me. But So I got to know about them as soon as I got into business. They even made Carrie a uh, champion for, for one, I think it was one day. And, and on the movie, it shows because of his leg. Um, and so... I, kn I know what year we saw the boot come off. I've told this before, like Colonel De Beers, one of the wrestlers with uh, with uh, AWA later. Uh, we were wrestling at the Kill Auditorium in St. Louis. And, he, you know, did a nut shot thing where you, you spread the legs, pull their legs back against the turn post and then yank the, the nut them, and the, the boot came off. The colonel's just got the boot in his hand. He looks and carries only got like this. If this was the... Can't do it. If this was, this part was gone, the, the bottom, like what they're trying, you know, what they offered to do to me to take the ankle off. In the movie, they showed it to be right up here. <laughs> and, um, you know, that, but I, since we know from that, that would have been 85, 86. Um, we know from that that the motorcycle wreck, if that's what that actually happened from, and I imagine it is, happened before that. And uh, they were showing the motorcycle wreck to be in 86, and then he started doing all the rehabbing. And like I said, board foot was gone the night. And, you know, I I, um, I, yeah, I got so fed up. But I was like, boy, man, hell, I don't even care to watch it because what you don't know what you're watching. It's, it's At the beginning, it says inspired by a true story. Well, you lied on everything so far up to when they got to that and a couple other things like I was saying with David and I don't want to I don't want to rattle people that are not even here to defend themselves nor the family if they ever hear about this uh, needs to hear about this but uh, 
he was more involved in, in his than just his medicine. Um, but when it first happened, you know, the first thing we heard back in the States, because it was in Japan, and Japan to these 12 hours behind, so when we flip, you know, fast spring forward and fall back, 12 hours behind at a certain point or ahead, whatever it is, 12 hours. So if it's say, let's just say noon, he takes his medicine at noon. Um, when it gets get to Japan, if it was one hour front or back, but it's exactly 12. So you see 12 and it's still dark. He forgot, you know, about his medicine and, you know, took the time difference, confused, you know, he got off. So he took more thinking it's 12 o'clock and I'm just using the time, you know, I don't know what time it was, but that was the, that was the, you know, the thing he took his medicine because he was off on it, but there was a bottle of something else and wasn't told what, in fact, that didn't come out to after an autopsy. Um, and I, I would guess it'd be painful because the ruptured uh, intestine has got to be painful as hell. Um, yeah, man, it was, it was, it was so much was off. And they didn't even talk about Chris, the other one. They, they just totally let, there was four brothers and they yeah. made it, changed it like one was real young. And if that's true at all, then that's five because Chris, Chris was the one. When we were in Japan, you know, ironically in Japan again, um, Carrie was was the last one to get we were waiting down in the lobby to go get on the the buses to take us to the uh, either town or the arena. I think the arena that was it was close from Tokyo where we were staying, or wherever the Tobu Takanawa. I think we was going to Takanawa, but they um, Black Jack Lanza for y'all to remember him. He was an agent, you know, he wrestled way back. Um, he was the agent, well, which is one that takes care of it, handles the stuff on the road. And uh, we're all, but without all, a bunch of them are on the bus, but we're sitting out waiting because this couple guys were notorious for being late. Gary was one of them. Um, we we sitting there in the lobby, nice lobby, sitting there because for me, I was getting extra looks at the Japanese girls are pretty to me. And, uh, so, um, I mean, some look like they go whoop my ass and I didn't do nothing. But, uh, yeah, they, uh, uh, Lanza, the, the elevator's right there. Ding, he comes out and he's got his head down. He don't even look at us. We're all sitting on the outskirts of, of the lobby. Um, and you see him pacing back and forth with his head down. He looked upset. And, uh, one of us, it wasn't me, but I forgot who it was sitting next to me. I think it was one of the uh, Japanese boys. Um, Mr. Lanza-san. <laughs> he put an S-O-N on the end of your name. Like a Marty-san. You would be Greek-san. <laughs> yeah. Or George-san, but we don't know who George is. But he, <laughs> Savage-san. Um, uh, what he said, uh, Lanza-san, what's the matter? And we all had kind of noticed because Lanza was always laid back and relaxed. It chill, you know, even in, in you know troubled times. Some days just were bad. They get mad or, you know. But so uh, he's just guys. He goes, they got to tell Carrie. Uh, well, his brother Chris killed himself, and we're like, oh shit, because that was now be fourth. You know, David, uh, what, uh, who else was it? It was uh, David, uh, Mike, I think, OD, but uh, the same kind of, I think he was taking his pain medicine. As the movie depicted, it was, was he was upset. Oh, he got his shoulder hurt. That's right. So his was like starting with the injury, but that pain medicine, that's how everybody gets, gets caught up at first. I mean, that's how it got me when the ankles went bad. But we had pain pills all through, you know, if you needed to help you through a match. But then when you get a serious injury, you got to take a ball of time. Man, I got caught up in for a while. But so I was, I know David was the first. I don't remember who was second and Mike. So, okay, I'm sorry, that he already had three. Right. Or was this third? Anyway, David for sure and Mike for uh, Mike for sure. Well, it's a and, horror story, and I don't think they did the great. It is. That's why they didn't need to bullshit on it. And yeah. and so Carrie comes out. It's Dean, uh, elevator, you know, and and we see it's Carrie coming out, and all of us did like this. But but this Hilton looking to watch because the lads is walking up to him. Carrie, 
And then, hey, Black Jack, what's up? Got to tell you some news that I, it's my job. I don't want to tell you. And Carrie, we're all like, oh, shit, how's this going to go? I mean, we're thinking we'll grab Carrie, hold him in case he goes nuts. I mean, how's he going to respond? This will be the third, fourth, or second for sure. And, and, uh, yeah, I think third though. But David, Mike, and just now Chris. Uh, yeah. So he's here about the third brother that's died. And you know, as far as we knew, I'm just saying for Devon actually get mad at me. I'm just saying what we all were told. I mean, so all the boys I've talked to got pissed off like I did. Same thing. Because we were there, we saw, we know. And then you Kevin, you're in charge, and you let him say this bullshit. Um I think um, and I'm getting choked up about it, Carrie. We thought Carrie was going to lose it or bust out. What's he going to do? Go back, get mad? You know, everybody reacts different. Or he might just cry and can't go home. Or which we figured mostly that he's going to leave. You know, go home immediately. But after he tells him, Carrie just sits there and goes, "Oh, well, I figured that's what would happen." And then walk right past Lance and went to the to the, the buses, and we're all like, "What?" Wait a minute, what just happened? <laughs> and, um, you know, Carrie and I were very close with them. In fact, we hung out together the, the whole tour. It was right at the end of the tour. In fact, it was last, it was either last day or next last. But so, um, you know, I didn't want to say much because I saw Carrie's reaction. So I'm, and I'm going to be sitting with him on the bus, you know, usually cutting up, playing cards or telling jokes or looking at Carrie was real good. Like with me on, on spotting the ladies, you know, that we wanted. Like, he actually told the bus driver, Hey, stop, I got to get something real quick. You know, bus driver, goes, Oh, what's up, uh, Mr. Karasan? That lady right there, he goes, Oh, there'll be more at the match. We have to get to the match. <laughs> that's that's, fine. Yeah, that's some shit I would do, right? But so he, but Sep, I would know not to. He didn't, he didn't, I don't know. Uh, Carrie was definitely eccentric. He was definitely different, but in a fun way. You couldn't you couldn't get mad at it. I mean, uh, the movie they, the movie made money, that's for sure. I don't know. I heard it didn't do that well, and there definitely won't be no awards given to it. That's Probably. what I heard. I don't know. I mean, yeah. manual. There's so many things that you hear and you find out later you heard wrong. You didn't heard wrong. They told you wrong. Yeah, and I'm glad. I mean, I, I had a great time over in Israel a few years ago. I don't even remember how many now. Uh, probably longer than I think. It seems like yesterday. But it was, we went over, I went over, they were having me do his retirement match, Kevin's uh, retirement match. And, um, you know, it was, it was a great time meeting him. But well, I I'd already knew him, but I mean, seeing him again after so, I hadn't seen him in years. And, uh, and I hadn't seen him since Carrie died. And um, his boys right there. The one in the movie, it ends with they were probably six or seven years old. And he was saying, yeah. I don't have, I used to be a brother. I don't have no brothers now. And they were saying, um, well, we'll be your brothers, you know, and this, that's kind of where it ended. And they were still little, that's them now. Um, and I don't know the time, like, again, the timeline was so off. And I was telling yeah. Attical, I was like, I was getting mad. And she finally said, you want me to put Snow White or something else on? So you stop cussing. <laughs> I was so damn mad. And uh, I, I, I'm sorry, Kevin. I, I did yell at you a couple of times. I, I didn't mean it. You know, I love you. To death. Um, uh, he, know, he knows you love him. But you saw something else, too, recently. You saw the A&E. They've been doing the... Uh, the oh, a bunch, a bunch of them. I, I haven't finished the Terry Gordy one. Uh, but it's... I, man, I didn't know he started at 13 The, the one old. you were talking to me the most about was with Scott Hall, though. Yeah, because... I was watching the memories, our memories together and, and, you know, whatever else. Um, and it, it was like, and, and I'll say this too. And I sure hope the fine Eric's don't get mad at me, but and it's not y'all's fault. I'm sure as I thought about it, I'm thinking too, Kevin might've been trying to protect the family and the business, you know, uh, maybe he didn't want the world getting to, you know, if they're all druggies, nobody cares that they died. You know, OD, they no OD, no OD. You know, but if you leave that out, now it's like just tragic as hell and sad, like a curse, like they said, Devon Eric curse. Um, but uh, yeah, A and E, and I love y'all, uh, Ross and uh, what's his other son's name? 
Um, right, well, anyway, I, I love y'all. And his wife was very nice. We all hung out in the dressing room. He had his own dressing room, of course. I was trying to send you some other pictures where we all were at an outdoor restaurant in uh, Israel, in Tel Aviv. And, um, and it was wild because they they couldn't go out in public because that was how popular they were. I mean, I sat out there with all the local guys and Tatanka. And, but I think Tatanka either was, wasn't invisible to him. I was on the outside by the road sidewalk and it's a wild feeling when people from like say israel more so israel than like the germany's and the england's and, and scotland's ireland's um japan's japan is, is just so wrestling i never knew israel was that big into their the wrestling um, people were people whole world by. whole world yeah, i guess, I guess the they, world, they, they get it yeah um, you know, the, if they were, it gets to them, I and mean, I guess with the internet, more. But um, I, oh, now, I, now, now it's more than ever, Marty. Oh, more I'm sure. Um, we're sitting at the table eating, cutting up with everybody, and having a couple of beers. And thank you, Marty Janetti, or however they're, I don't really know their dialect or how they speak when they try to do English. And I can speak no, whatever they speak, Israeli. Um, they, but the. Uh, but he just ain't that. And I'm like, yeah, hey, how you, how you doing, dude? They're like, oh, no way, no way, no way. I said, well, all of us are wrestlers, all of them. And they look like, oh, he's like, yo, we don't know you. But that's a, it's actually a good feeling that you're in a country like Israel. You know, the, the God say, God's people or whatever it is. Um, and they're walking by and taking pictures with you, you know, with cell phones now. Everybody's camera ready. Um my bodyguard, Hadar, the girl that's in some of the pictures that I was trying to get to you. I had a gap day. But, um, yeah, they were all like, wow, man. You no, know, he was that popular here. So these are not. <laughs> but um, it, it was cool. I think um, the, the reason Von Eric's, they would have got swamped. I didn't realize they were that popular over there. No, they're they're, they're know, popular that's... worldwide, bro. They're legends. Yeah. They're legends just like Scott Hall. That's why you were watching his AEW. Yeah, so, uh, but, that's, but so what I was going to say is, and that's why I was terrible, but the producer for mine and the producer for a lot of them, um, I was going to tell her, why, why don't y'all redo that Iron Claw movie? Because they're more factual. Uh, and they still get things wrong, but what they do is fact check. I mean, to the point I was getting upset that they fact checked so much, but didn't ask Karen, the girl that was saying some things that were way not true. Uh, I don't think she was doing it maliciously. She just got beat up in the head. Talk Another about one, San Francisco. Yeah, so, so uh, <laughs> they, um, but so with uh, with Scott, you know, I think uh, I was watching it and taking notes because I like, man, we got to do a show with this because it brought back so many memories, so many. I mean, the uh, only time I got beat up probably in my life, um, you know, by Scott, and it was at the beginning of when they we first got there. When they first got there. It was a tag team, him and Dan Spivey. And there were you know, one six five, six six, the other was about six eight. That's what they called. They were, I think before they got there, they called us the Twin Towers. Um, but you know, for whatever reasons, Dusty or somebody hit him with the American Starship. And oh, uh, yeah, and, and that's what they came in is the American Starship. And one was uh I think I know he was called Coyote, American and Danny Starship, was yeah. Yeah, there they are. And and the one on the left, see Dave Peterson. He went as DJ Peterson WWE for a minute. You know, until he that look was it became look, look at your main event the double headliner over here. Yes, yeah, when I won the title, the Central States title. That's what's up. Um and uh at one time I was told I've told before I had they had the Central States tag team and a TV title. I, I had all three of the belts. I'm like well, what we're going to do to get the other guys over, you know, because you know, belt helps you get over. Um, but, but so, uh, yeah, they, we, 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 I was, I was tagging with Tommy Rogers as tag, uh, as uh, Uptown Boys, and we had to uh, wrestle them a, a few times. And, um, you know, they were still green and new, but learning and willing to learn. Um, both were nice. Um, Danny was as nice as can be. Scott was, you know, it was nice. What, what's he called? Eagle was it Eagle and Coyote, or I don't remember what they called Danny. I think it was Eagle, the Eagle. Um, 
but so you know scott would get so upset though when i'd pick him up for a slapper he's six six and i'm five eleven right and he's two at that time jacked at 270 you can see in the pictures how big he was um i'd pick him up for a slam i can't get his arm up ah. but i pick him up for a slam and hold him there because i'm figuring well this will make it look yes it was jacked um he, more so than your, these places these are later on and he, he trimmed down some as far as bulk the bulk he, he lost a little bulk because he could move around the ring better but there's was it coyote yeah there was coyote right there but so I'd, I'd pick him up and hold him up there for like for the slam for the, you know the, the arms between the legs i'd hold it yeah. i can't i can't right into it with this arm but it was this arm i'll I help be holding it up to be like number one I'd hold him and hold him and hold him. he didn't know i was doing that of course because it says that way and then slam him and i'd look at danny and he'd feed in and do the same thing and slam him and then tommy would come in and do one and another uh, would four square off and they'd roll out but Scott saw the TV taping of us doing it, and he got so upset. He goes, damn, Marty, you got to embarrass us like that, holding up the number one while you're just holding. You're 220. We're 275, and you're just holding us up there like we're candy. <laughs> <laughs> and putting the number one up. <laughs> That's tough. That's funny. But, uh, no, but we were all still learning. You know, you know, I said, yeah, maybe I thought it was showmanship for the fans, but – yeah. You know, it probably doesn't make you feel good. So, you know, we'll get that up. <laughs> Obviously not. What, yeah. what, were your, what were your thoughts when you saw Scott Hall uh, do the whole NWO thing with uh, Kevin Nash? I'll get to that. Uh, we got how much we got now? We still got a few minutes. What, what, where are we at now? One, one ten, one nine nine fifty. Where are we at? We're we're um, near we're near the time limit. Okay. So real quick, I rush it because we got a couple pictures. I think, but um, it Scott, well, Scott came in the dressing room one night. Well, I know that's why I wanted you to show the Dave pictures on the one they're both on there, Dave Peterson, and you can see the similarities. Um, this one? Yeah, it looks at Dave, and look, Scott, as much as you see, these are old-ass posters. These are 1985 posters. Um, and then the Coyote, Dave's on that one somewhere, ain't he? Yeah, down there at the bottom. They had curly hair. They had the same mustache. Dave was built, you know, he was probably 6'3". It was, Scott was 6'6". Six, six. Um, he was 240, where Scott was 270. But same body style, you know, muscled up, lean muscled up like Carrie. And uh, girls loved that with Carrie, and they loved it with Dave and Scott. But uh, said all that to say, we're checking in one night in the hotel. You know, me and Dave, we, you know, became best friends. And, you know, he died, of course, and that sucked. I lost the best, best friend, like, in life, not just uh, as the boy. But so he, um, we go to sign in the hotels. And if you're with ADA or NWA, you know, Central States, I think it was called All-Star Wrestling, um, you get a discount for the rooms. And when he walked in, they said, oh, my God, Scott Hall. Wow, how are you doing, Scott? And Dave said, well, I can get to this guy because he was new. You know, he they didn't nobody know him yet, really, because he hadn't been on TV maybe once. And he said, he said, he had scratchy voices. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm tired. I want to get a ring. <laughs> <laughs> and so he signed in to Scott Hall. And, you know, no, there ain't nothing wrong with that, except what happened was, <laughs> what had happened was, uh, we go to the, uh, the room and had a party, imagine, and, um, you know, a few girls there, and what is four or five of us, the, him and I and three girls, and everybody's, you know, partied and spent the night and got drunk a little bit and whatever, but so we wanted everybody, when five people wouldn't go fit on the bed, so we pulled the one box uh, thing off, left the box spring in the regular mattress, and while I was doing that, bumped the, the end table with the, with the lap, the bedside tape and uh, with the lamp and it fell off and broke that's it but i you know i figured well the lamp was it cost i just paid for it in the morning um but i didn't have to i forgot um and but that was that was it on the hotel damage uh i mean the bed on the floor is nothing just pick it up and put it back but we were we all overslept so we had to hurry they get didn't get to run into the office and say hey let me pay for that lamp I figured I'd call and do it later, you know, send it to him. Got the name of it and everything. So I get the phone number. 
Well, the next day was our, we got checks, you know, for the week, you know, we got checks weekly and that hotel was the last day and that, that payday was the last on the check and they deducted that. I, I got this check, check stuff, but I kept it. It was the first time I got fined in wrestling. Wasn't the last, first time they charged, it says hotel damage. It was like 15 something. I'll show it next time we're on here. Uh, so a $15 lap was the damage. Well, Bulldog Bob Brown went to, to uh, Scott Hall and told him, he goes, you know, Marty Jannetty signed in as your name and destroyed a room. I mean, just destroyed it to get you fired. You need to go do whatever you need to do. You'll get in no trouble with us. And Scott's just here, and they're going to fire me because of that, because he did my name. And um, I'm laying in, it was, I'm, I'm hung over <laughs> again, and I'm laying on the table. Uh, in Kansas City, where we was doing TV taping, I didn't get to do it that night because I, I'm sleeping. I, I always did that though, or under or over if it was too crowded. And um, the next thing I know, I'm on the floor on my hands and knees, like in the day, he's trying to look. I look up and see everybody looking at me, and you know, look, I see Dave, and, I, and then I hear Scott. God damn it! And he was storming out the door. The, to the baby face side to go across the stage to the heels. But I'm like, what, what the fuck's going on? And I see the table. I'm like, what, what's happening? Uh, Everybody's like, Dave said, come here. And he took me from one of the long mirrors and my lip was split here. It was like half of it here, half of it here. And uh, the eye was hanging open right here from underneath, right over the bone. Um, and I'm like, what? The, what? Oh, fuck. And they said, he just came in, saw you don't sleep in there, and just started wailing on you. He just wanted to give you some of his machismo. Yeah, and he did. And then I saw, <laughs> yeah, you got the business from the bad guy, man. Bad yeah. times don't last, but bad guys do. Yes. And so I, I'm like, well, fuck that. And I mean, I went out the door. <laughs> there was a pipe about this long, a metal metal oh, pipe. Yeah. You were getting ready I, to fuck I, his ass up. <laughs> uh, I got I got it and went to the hillside to find his dressing room. And uh, I mean, because you got to remember, I still don't even know about the hotel shit yet. I'm just like, you just came in and waylaid on me? Is that because I did the number one thing? I mean, is that mad about that? That was a long time ago. It was weeks ago. But so uh, I'm heading over there, Bulldog Bob Brown, the one that stirred it up on pers purpose, and Bob Geigel. Love Bob Geigel. He, he, him and Harley owned it. The territory um they're standing there they grab me no 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 bob says no 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 i know you want to get him but you, you need to get to the hospital and then bulldog said well, you're just going to get hurt again and i started to hit him with the damn pipe and when i found so the next day i find out we're at st louis kill auditorium i stitch up here stitch up here and uh going to they have you enough dressing rooms at the kill the old kill that you you can pretty much put at least one I mean, but two, you can get two and, and everybody's got a room or two, um, two to the room. And uh, I see Scott coming down the hall and I'm thinking, fuck. It's the first time I've seen him since it happened and I'm thinking, shit, here we go, round two. And, I, and I'm thinking, man, I hurt. <laughs> I didn't even feel it that night. Uh, but now it's the next day, it's sore, right? It's just sore here, it's sore here. I guess that's only two places to hit me because nothing, nothing else. But he, he does, and then he, he explained all to me about the hotel. They tricked him. He was apologizing. It was hard, brother, but I, I let it go. I said, yeah. all right, man. But, you probably so, did but the I right said, thing, though, and you guys still well, yeah, be good boys. Best, best, like, bestest friends. You know, not best like him and Sean or him and Kevin or even him and the kid. But, uh, yeah, we, we worked out good together. Um, you know, in AWA. We got Kurt Henning come into the picture because they tagged up. We tagged up. And uh, is that his Hall of Fame where he did yeah. the speech? Yeah. That was a good little speech, especially the way he ended it. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, know like, we – He stands out ahead. with a white jacket. Yeah. And uh, it was a decent speech he gave, man. Scott, yeah. Yeah, sometimes yeah. he could be – seem like the Razor character was how he was. And sometimes – the Razor character was only the cool things come out of him in real life. A couple of dumbass things would come out of him, but he was still funny, you know, and we loved him to death. At, at one time, the one, two, three kid and I, uh, well, he, him and when it was Diesel, 
they tagged together against Scott Hall and I, and yeah, just, we're still all buddies right there. And, uh, and that one of them left and it ended up out of that, that, that tag feud, uh, the kid and me squared off as the little guys, a feud against each other in singles and him and diesel squared off as the big guys. And then you turn, turn it around, somebody interfering or whatever. We all became buddies again. Like the kid and I, and kid and I went on to win the the title that Sean and I never got official credit for, but we did win it. Um, so it was two times, two times tag team champions. And then Scott and Kevin went on and made history. <laughs> you know, when they ended up going to WCW to get crashing it out as the outsiders and then formed NWO. And they definitely went for a hell of a ride, man. I don't know which ride. which faction was bigger and better. NWO, uh, come on, stop it. The, no, the four horsemen or oh. NWO. 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 Because without NWO, there's no Monday night wars. Yeah. You know, that, that shit. Like, as far they, as the impact, yeah. It Wars. made wrestling much bigger than it ever was, but we got to wrap this up. And I, and I, I want to let your people know that they can come meet you at the Squared Circle Expo, March 29th, March 30th, yeah. live in Indianapolis, and then yeah. also at WrestleCon in Philadelphia. We'll be in Philadelphia all week long from April 4th to April 7th. Make sure you pass by and party with Marty. You can also meet Black Dahlia, who's been on this show a few times. Zaya Brookside, upcoming talent. We have to talk. That's uh, Roddy Piper's. Uh, Teal daughter. Piper. Roddy. That Teal oh, Teal. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right. Piper. Your last name. Okay. Talk is going to be with Marty all day Saturday. And then at nighttime as well, Teal Piper is going to be with us. And we're also going to be at the Battleground Championship Wrestling Block Party. You can come hang out with me, Greek Savage, Mr. Marty Genetti. Black Dolly will be there. Uh, Teal Piper will be there. It's going to be a good time. Uh, Marty's going to be letting you guys know on his Facebook page more details coming soon. Hey, and just to, for fair warning to my party friends, um, I, I mean, I won't be a snob. I mean, of course, I have maybe a beer or two, but I'm not going to be crazy like I always am because I'm trying to find another life. Yeah, take it easy that. on him, guys. Take it easy on Marty. Yeah, because I've been, I mean, you know, I've been fighting the sepsis so long that. Any kind of party and just just gives it the upper hand. We don't need and no partying, I'm, I'm man. Finally, I'm finally getting the upper hand on it now, but it's still there. I slip up, here it comes again, and it's back on top. No, that's so why we got to. Please have forgive a me for, for not going to be the crazy MJ, but we'll still be fun. We'll have fun. But don't apologize for. First of all, you don't even need beer to be fucking crazy. You're already fucking crazy. <laughs> now say goodbye to your people and let them know you're going to see them next week right here on the party. Definitely tomorrow. will. The Adorator just walked in. Say hi, Adorator. Hey. <laughs> uh, yes, we'll be. We love y'all. Thank you for tuning in. Remember, subscribe if you haven't already. It's free. It, it helps. Um, we can do more things with the more subscribers. Yeah. And uh, if you want to see things, join the VIP. I don't think it's much like a cup of coffee. It's less than a cup of coffee somewhere at Starbucks. But anyway, yeah. Anyway. Um, come see us next week. I think we're going to talk more about some of the. Well, I'll have to be surprised. We'll hit you up sooner show, than Thursday. Show, show them that t shirt. And you know, it's a crazy time when this guy's involved. You can go subscribe <laughs> to Wrestling with Savage. We'll see you next week, everybody. We'll see yeah, you. We'll be here. Same damn time, same damn place. Look. Dude, if you're seeing this right now, you're watching the party with Marty. Yeah.